Hi, today we would like to talk about platform and app histories based on our forthcoming book chapter in the past web that is coming out this summer. We will show how we can use web archives for writing platform and app histories, despite the many challenges that these new ephemeral digital objects pose to their archiving and history writing. We will discuss what kind of archive materials are available to us and what kind of platform and app histories these materials afford. We'll start with thinking about the archive materiality of platforms and apps. The main point is that web archives contain more than we think. If we take a slightly different entry point to our object of study and consider the medium specificity or materiality of platforms and apps. We will then introduce a framework for conducting platform and app histories and demonstrate a way to assess the availability of archived platform and app resources. Finally, we address what kind of histories these materials privilege and what they enable us to tell about the evolution of platforms and apps. The website or the early web has mainly consisted of interlinked websites and as a consequence, the website has become the main unit of archiving as well as historical analysis. However, in the past decade, we have witnessed the emergence of new types of digital objects, in particular digital platforms and apps for social media and beyond. But what characterizes these specific digital objects as archived objects as compared to the website or web page? When thinking of how platforms and apps are archived today, we contend that we need to consider their specific materiality. With the term materiality, we refer to the material form of those digital objects themselves, as well as the material circumstances of those objects that leave material traces of their production and use behind. The idea of material traces is derived from Matthew Kirschenbaum's idea for conducting historical software studies, an approach to study the history of software objects. Platforms and apps are specific types of internet-enabled software. This software is built, maintained, documented, and these are the material circumstances that leave material traces. And these include developer documentation, business tools and product pages, help pages, support pages, in addition to the material form of the software object itself. Importantly, these material circumstances that leave material traces are important primary sources that offer particular research opportunities. These material traces may tell stories about the evolving production, preferred usage, and embedded politics of software objects. So we consider platform and app historiography through the lens of software studies. Platforms and apps are new types of digital objects that notoriously resist archiving due to their ephemerality and continuous updates. As a consequence, their histories are being overwritten with each update rather than written and preserved. And this raises the question how we can examine their histories, where and how are platforms and apps archived. We can find social media platforms and web archives, but if we start from their main URL, we can only write histories of their sign-up page or login page. But if we look at the links in the bottom of this page, we can go beyond the end user and consumer interface and also find snapshots, archived pages for Twitter's business pages, for example. So learning from the specificity of platforms, we know that they are multi-sided. That is, they cater to different kinds of users, including end users, developers, businesses, and advertisers. And platforms offer specific resources or documents that are tailored to those user groups. So in this previous paper, we looked at which types of resources platforms provide for each of those user groups. 
For example, they offer help pages to end users, API documentation to developers, marketing materials to businesses, and documentation about specific targeting possibilities to advertisers. So we took inventory of the kinds of materials offered to those user groups and considered what types of platform histories can be written using these materials. So apps share some of the archival challenges of social media platforms, but they also face their own as each app update overrides the current version and app stores do not keep previous versions of apps. On top of that, while apps may be tightly connected to web platforms, they are not web native objects. So are apps archived? Where and by whom? To locate former app versions, the app as a material form, we may turn to several third party software repositories, such as Cydia for iOS apps or APK Mirror for Android apps. Contrary to traditional institutional archives, these repositories are non-institutional storage locations for the retrieval of software and were never designed for permanent preservation. So while they may share commonalities with archives, software repositories do not curate collections or records for permanent historical preservation and do not consider their value as evidence or as a source for historical research. So while apps and app stores both primarily exist on mobile devices, the leading app stores, Google Play and Apple's App Store, also provide web-based graphical user interfaces to their stores. And these stores contain a wealth of information about specific apps, as well as their recommendations. For each app, there's a details page with app title, developer, screenshots, description, requested app permissions, download statistics, reviews, ratings, and more. And fortunately for app historians, these app store detail pages are preserved in web archives and create unique opportunities for historical app studies. In short, to locate historical app materials, we may thus either turn to app repositories to retrieve former app versions or to web archives to retrieve app metadata. So in this book chapter, we present a method to assess the availability of archived web sources for social media platforms and mobile apps across the leading web archives and app repositories. We selected the current top 20 most popular social media platforms and top 10 mobile apps worldwide. For the social media platforms, we created a list of URLs pointing to the location of their primary materials for the various user groups or sites. And for the mobile apps, we created a list of URLs pointing to the App Store detail pages for every single app and to their link in the app repositories. To assess which web archives actually hold archival records of these resources, we employed Memento's time travel service. And to scale and automate this process for our large set of URLs, we used Memgator, an open source tool that can request all the available archive snapshots across all web archives that support the Memento protocol. So we gathered all the URLs and then analyzed how well or a platform or app is archived along three dimensions. First, the volume of availability or the total number of mementos held. Second, the depth of availability or the number of days, months or years between the first and last snapshot. And third, the breadth of availability or the number of web archives holding these snapshots. So the volume and depth reflect the amount of material that is available and the afforded level of granularity or resolution for the historical analysis. And the breadth enables researchers to triangulate historical sources and reconstruct past states of platforms and apps from multiple web archives. 
For the top 20 social media, we find that especially the materials for developers and businesses have been archived pretty well, enabling researchers to write platform histories beyond the front end user interface. And we can use these materials aimed at developers and businesses to examine platforms influential roles as development platforms, advertising platforms, content creation platforms, or as media publishers. So while the end user or consumer side of Facebook might not be very well archived, its developer side, its business and advertiser sites have a lot of materials available to us. So using the same method, we assessed how well the app detail pages in app stores have been archived by web archives. And contrary to social media platforms, these app detail pages have been less well archived in general. Because overall, we found that the Google Play apps were better archived, at least in terms of their volume, depth, and breadth of the availability. The four best archived Android apps were Facebook Messenger, Instagram, Facebook, and WhatsApp Messenger. While other apps, which were often Chinese apps, such as WeChat, QQ, Alipay, Taobao, and Baidu, were hardly archived. So there's also a discrepancy between like the giant American-based apps that are well archived and Chinese apps that are not well archived. Still, even with tens or hundreds of archived pages, as the case with WeChat, we can still write histories of these apps. So the archived app materials enable researchers to examine the evolution of individual apps or app collections or app genres. For example, we, may, we can uh, examine the emergence of secure messaging apps and how they offer new and different ways of doing privacy by reading the apps changing app descriptions to examine how their rhetorical positioning towards privacy changes over time and across apps. So when we look at the preservation of apps in software repositories, we found more promising results. All of the top 10 apps in our set are relatively well archived based on all three criteria. With access to the app as an archive material object, we can examine the app's evolving interface design or read the source code to study evolving app permissions, embedded code, and external relationships to other infrastructural web services, such as advertising and content delivery networks. So we argue that while platforms and apps continuously update and change, these changes also offer research opportunities. The routine overriding of digital objects and their data through continuous incremental software updates constitute both a core problem as well as a source of research opportunities for platform and app historians at least as long as the changes are documented by these digital objects themselves and preserved by web archives. So the ephemerality of digital platforms and mobile apps may be understood as the result of a continuous stream of incremental software updates that override the material presence of a platform or app every single time. And we understand these contextual materials as important primary sources through which digital objects such as platforms and apps write or indeed overwrite their own biographies, thereby building on the emerging genre of media biography, software biography, website biography and platform biography. We may conceive of this process of overwriting as a challenge of material erasure or as a native mode of software history writing. That is, even though these ephemeral digital objects change continuously, web archives and software repositories fortunately capture many of these changes, thereby arresting the ongoing material transformation of platforms and apps at certain time intervals. Consequently, we argue that the biographies of platforms and apps are co-written by these digital objects themselves and by web archives, and in the case of apps, also by software repositories. 
we can employ the different types of archive primary and contextual sources to reconstruct these processes overriding at different levels of granularity from the minute incremental changes to the longer term evolution of a platform or app. And we can use web archives and repositories to reconstruct what was written on top of other writing and narrate the drama of changes, updates, and versions. Thank you. And you can find the preprint of our book chapter openly available online. <laughs>